if you were to prove a negative on Mars, then there's two interesting consequences. One, it's it would basically mean, yeah, okay, sure, maybe panspermia, um, even between two neighboring planets, is not a very efficient process of this taking place. And I think there's lots of credible reasons why one might be skeptical of that being effective. These rocks don't necessarily do a direct route, right? It's not, you know, if you if you fly on, you know, Starship or something, maybe it would be like an 18-month trip from Earth to Mars, which is about as fast as we can go. But you wouldn't, but that's, you know, a coordinated Hoffman transfer orbit. You wouldn't expect that a random rock knocked off would necessarily follow such an efficient path. So I I don't know what the typical time scale would be, but I can imagine these rocks spending millions of years out in the abyss before they eventually make their way to one of these planets. And then the question is, how long could a, a spore of life truly survive in in the vacuum of space? Now, we've exposed things like tardigrades and bacterial spores to the vacuum of space, and they have survived days, weeks, I think even months in the vacuum of space and be reanimated. I, I don't think we can do the experiment where you simulate what a million years of that of that environment would be like for such a such an entity so i think it's an open question as to whether it's really plausible and of course if you go really long if you go to billions of years like potassium which is a key part of you know a lot of our chemistry decays on a 1.3 billion year half-life so a lot of your elements will actually the start DNA. to you know and carbon yeah has a six thousand years a carbon 13 so you know some of your uh, actual elements if you're exp- if you're just hanging out for a long time would actually start to degrade so that there must be a time scale which no matter how well adapted you are for space and it's kind of obviously these things did not evolve to be well suited for space they're just hardy there must be a time scale over which they cannot survive that journey and so i guess the real question would be yeah, how long do these rocks typically spend in the environment of space and then what fraction of those then can survive the impact which is going to be another you know extreme event for the rock to experience and for any life forms to experience that are attached to it and then once it's done both of those things it then has to actually have you know metabolism and a food source and uh, the ability to to respirate and, and to survive on that planet